The pancreas is an important organ in the body and it essentially has a dual function. It's gonna work to help support digestive capacity, so the ability for you to digest and break down nutrients that you bring in. And it also plays a role in metabolic health as it secretes insulin and glucagon. If the pancreas isn't functioning correctly, you may have trouble specifically with digestive disorders. You may have trouble with digesting your carbohydrates and your fats, and you've got loose stools, fatty stools, and or have malnutrition because you're not getting your nutrients in well. There are a number of things that you can do to support the health of your pancreas. You can stay hydrated, you can avoid alcohol and tobacco, and you can give yourself a little bit of digestive support with things like apple cider vinegar or even papaya that give you a little bit of natural enzyme support. The two key biomarkers I think about when I think about pancreatic health are amylase and lipase. Amylase is an enzyme that's involved in the breakdown of carbohydrates specifically. You actually have a little bit of amylase that comes through the salivary glands, and it is also secreted through the pancreas as well. Your amylase might be out of range for two reasons, depending on which way it's going. If your amylase is low, you may have slowed digestive function. And when your amylase is high, especially if it's quite high, you may think about things like pancreatitis. Pancreatitis is essentially a acute inflammation of the pancreas that could happen secondary to alcohol. Where symptom-wise, you may struggle with intense nausea and vomiting, abdominal pain, and altered mental status. Lipase is an enzyme that is specifically involved in digesting fat. This is an enzyme that's more specifically going to be secreted by the pancreas, so it tends to be a more marker of pancreatic function, generally speaking. When it's low, you might be seeing things like slowed or lower digestive capacity, especially of fats. When it's very high, you might think about pancreatitis, pancreas issues, and or dysfunction in the gallbladder. The conditions that most commonly come to my door related to the pancreas are either digestive related, and so here I might see lower levels of enzymes, and it may also be accompanied by a lower level of elastase. And here this might be someone is having trouble with you know, reflux, abdominal pain, like poor elimination, and they may have low digestive capacity that could be kind of early term and manageable or late term, and they essentially are not digesting foods at all and are struggling with malnutrition. So alcohol in excess can essentially cause damage to the pancreas and impact digestive function, but also function generally such that you may be at risk for acute inflammation of the pancreas or even pancreatic cancer. Good pancreatic health can be maintained by staying essentially really well hydrated, by limiting your consumption of alcohol, avoiding tobacco, supporting your digestive health with, you know, digestive supporting foods like your apple cider vinegars, your papayas, um, and managing stress as the thing that I see most commonly is that excessive stress down regulates the function of the pancreas. Stress and pancreatic health are actually quite commonly related. What I see most commonly in my practice is someone with like a very sluggish digestive system where they're having struggles with feeling abdominal pain, indigestion, and what we find is that high levels of stress have down-regulated their digestive function and have caused some of these symptoms. The thing that I think is most surprising for people that come to see me is the person that has been seeing me for years that has had amazing cholesterol and suddenly their LDL goes through the roof. And this is typically coinciding with change in hormones for women or perimenopause. So the rise in LDL and perimenopause is specifically related to the loss of estrogen. Estrogen has a protective effect on the cardiovascular system. And as women move towards menopause, they lose that protective impact and start to see a rise in their LDL levels. So this is a really important time to have more regular assessments of your cholesterol health. So as you approach perimenopause, you're gonna see some surprising things with your cholesterol, especially if you're someone who had perfect cholesterol their whole life. You may start to see that your LDL goes up, your HDL stays about the same, and your ApoB really increases along with your LDL. So as a woman in perimenopause, if you're thinking about how to mitigate your risk around cardiovascular disease, as you see your cholesterol numbers rising, you really wanna be mindful about decreasing your saturated fats, getting in your fiber, decreasing your consumption of processed food and sugar, 
But honestly, you may want to talk to your clinician about hormone replacement therapy or estrogen, which specifically has a positive impact on your cholesterol markers. So genetics is actually more important than we think when we think about cholesterol. And I see this every day where someone comes to me and they exercise and they're eating perfectly and yet they just wanna pull their hair out because their cholesterol markers are not perfect. And in the end, so much of this is influenced by genetics. And therefore it's important to take it seriously, but also with the energy of kindness and acceptance. I think if you're someone who genetically has high cholesterol, you may want to be a little bit more assertive with your clinician because although all the dietary things, thinking about saturated fat and processed food and exercising are still important, they may not move the needle for you like they would for someone else. And so here you may want to have a conversation about what medications might be useful for you to use to modulate your lipid levels.